Peace be to you, the reader. Let us attend, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. O Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for that is fulfilling to fulfill. It is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning and Happy New Year. And it's going to be a good year. Not necessarily an easy year, but it's going to be a good year. It will. So Jesus gets baptized on Epiphany. His baptism is what makes the day what it is. Epiphany. The uh, Theophany. The self manif the, the manifestation, the revelation of God. That's what it means. Because Jesus gets baptized, and, and of course it's Jesus the Son. The Spirit comes down in the form of a dove, and then the voice of the Father that in some accounts in the Scriptures say, thundered, thundered, and says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well Least. Now, why did Jesus get baptized? It tells us in the scripture to fulfill all righteousness. It's very important that we understand that the law that came from Moses, we call it the Mosaic law or the Levitical law, was given to the children of Abraham so that they might know how to live, how to become righteous before God. Of course, no one is righteous, and they discovered that because no one was capable of fulfilling that law. So what then was the function of the law? Paul tells us to point out sin, to teach the people what sin was. And the presumption was, the presumption was that if anyone would fulfill the law, he would be righteous before the Father, before God. And if he was righteous before God, he would not be subject to death. Now, baptism, baptism in the time of Jesus was a little bit different than, than, than our kind of baptism. We're going to talk about our kind of baptism in a moment. But in the time of Jesus, the baptism was for the remission of sins. Because people understood, those who were seeking God, that, that they did, were not able to fulfill the commandment, were not able to fulfill the Mosaic law, needed a way to, that, that their sins might be forgiven. And that's called the remission of sins. And the way that one would approach God for the remission of sins would be to symbolically wash himself with water. That's what we call the baptism of John. And so Jesus, when he went to John, 
when he went to his baptism, John rightfully said, I should be baptized by you, not you by me. But Jesus said, because John understood who Jesus was. But Jesus said, no, let it be done that we might fulfill all righteousness. So that everything required in the Mosaic law, in the Levit Levitical law, would be fulfilled. What happens? <clears throat> Jesus is crucified. But then Jesus is raised from the dead on the third day. He did not spontaneously self-generate or any idea like that. The, the scripture tells us, Paul tells us in Romans, that he was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. But it's the very fact that he was raised from the dead, the Jews realize later, indicates he must have been righteous according to the law. Because if a man was indeed raised from the dead, he was right in the sight of God in all things, and there was no sin. Because if there were sin, he would remain in the condition of death, alive in death death that the rest of the human race was. So it's his resurrection that becomes proof that this man is indeed righteous, and because he's righteous, he must have been the Son of God, because only God himself could be righteous, because only God was not subject to the death that brought sin into the world, and to the sin that brought death into the world. It becomes a vicious cycle. So Jesus now, when he's raised from the dead and he ascends into heaven, what? What happens? Before he ascends into heaven, he tells his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel and baptize. He says, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Every time you go to a baptism, you hear that gospel. He charges his disciples, they're apostles now, they're the ones sent forth with the gospel. Preach the gospel and baptize. Why baptize? Because the very nature of baptism has been forgiven. There's first the confession of the sin. The confession of sin. And then there's baptism. What happens in Christian baptism? What happens in Christian baptism is, is what could not have happened in the baptism of John because Christ had not resurrected. And what happens is this, the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit <coughs> comes. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, do you not know that you have been baptized into the death of Christ and you have been raised in the likeness of his resurrection? That means that when we were baptized, the Holy Spirit comes to us and gives us the power to become a son of God. Not possible before the resurrection. Possible now because Christ resurrected. Because when we are baptized into his death and we are raised in the likeness of his resurrection, that likeness comes from the Holy Spirit. It's restored to us the very possibility of life in God. We in God and God in us. So what happens then is what was lost in Eden is being restored and will find its final culmination, its fulfillment, its completion in the kingdom of God. And we now are in that middle period, kind of in the desert in a sense, going to the promised land where we learn we learn how to become sons of God and walk with him in obedience to him and at the same time receive his gifts in our life again in a way that was not possible before Christ was crucified. And it's an astounding thing. It's an astounding thing. The theological word for it is a $35 word. This is what we go to seminary for, to learn $35 words, okay? It's called recapitulation. All things are made new, including us, including us. Because when Christ ascended and through our baptism, 
the Holy Spirit is granted to us, and as I said, the Holy Spirit gives gifts. There is in every single person, in each one of us, there is a space that only God can fill. And if God is not filling that face, I'll, that space, I tell you, will we'll go through life trying to fill it with other things. Because we're not completely ourselves. We're not fully human unless God fills it. Because we are created to live in God. And if we live in God, those spaces are, are filled by God and we are made whole. And that's a process. That's a learning. That takes a lifetime. But that's at the very center of the purpose of our existence, is to know God. And when we locate that in ourselves, when we're honest with ourselves, we will see that space. When we locate that within ourselves and we make effort really to come close to God, the growth begins. The growth begins. And the blessings come. And does it mean life will be easy? No. Anyone over 40 knows that's not true. But it does mean that life will have purpose and meaning and direction. And when we have that, when we're holding on to the Lord, even if sometimes we feel like it's the very last knot in the rope and we look down, there's nothing but a canyon below us and we know if we let go, we're going to fall and die. But we won't fall and die, but that's what we think. All right? But we're holding on. We're holding on. Right? The Lord is always still with us. The Lord is merciful and he's good and he's got his arms around us and he holds us to himself. That is all encapsulated in the baptism of Jesus. That's what we can draw out from it so that we can understand it. That's why, one of the reasons too, that every year we bless the waters in the church. And that's what we'll be doing today at the end of the liturgy. Christ came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. That's what the Apostle Paul says. But we can say that about ourselves too. Of who I am the first. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me the sinner. The Jesus prayer. But that salvation is concrete and it's rich and it's dynamic and it's full of meaning and purpose and direction. We follow Christ because Christ is our life. And there is no other in whom that life can be found. God bless you all. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, may the Lord have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Please rise. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That always started by your power, to you we may give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.